Hello everybody. Another week has gone by and a lot to report on. We'll start with uh, Brexit, the unavoidable Brexit. Uh, Prime Minister Theresa May was in Brussels on Wednesday to hold talks with the leaders of the other 27 countries that make up the European Union and she managed to come back with something. So she came back with a delay to Brexit, so Brexit is now scheduled to happen on the 31st of October. Uh, it will be a, a Halloween Brexit, a trick-or-treat Brexit, we shall see. Um, but in terms of what it means for the markets, it's not very substantial. Uh, this is just a kicking the can down the road move. Uh, nothing has been decided. As we all know, Prime Minister Theresa May has tried to run a plan past Parliament, UK Parliament, three times now. Three times it was rejected. And if between now and the end of October there's no agreement on the UK side or on, a, on an exit deal, then it will be a no-deal Brexit again. So there will be more of the same. We'll, we'll get some respite over the summer months, but uh, the issue is still there. So the result for the markets is that um, nothing changed. So investors are uh, tired of Brexit. Uh, no one wants to touch uh, Brexit-related assets, and this is very visible on the pound. So the pound barely moved despite the drama that was going on and remains within a very tight range, currently trading around $1.30. Um, elsewhere, uh, we also have on Wednesday, so a very rich day for news and events related to, to the markets, we've had President uh, Mario Draghi, the president of the ECB, the European Central Bank. Uh, he held a speech at the end of the scheduled meeting and uh, his tone was interesting. Um, it was a tone that revealed a an increased dovishness uh, in, a, in, in a subtle way, but I think the dovishness of the ECB is increasing rather than going the other way, uh, which is what many expected towards the end of last year. We expected that by this time the ECB would have started to raise interest rates, but no. Uh, according to the words uh, and the judgment of uh, Mario Draghi, uh, the situation remains, uh, the risk remains to the downside. And he mentioned three main factors uh, and reasons for this. So um, protectionism, so trade, trade issues, uh, geopolitical instability, and also problems with emerging economies. Um, the result was that following this, the euro uh, dropped slightly, but then swiftly recovered because nothing changed. Uh, everything was already expected. It didn't bring anything new, other than perhaps an added uh, uh, level of dov dovishness. Uh, also on Wednesday, uh, we've had the publication of the FOMC meeting, the last FOMC meeting, the Fed's FOMC, of course, and uh, also nothing very substantial came from there, other than the reinforcement that, uh, as we all already knew, the Fed is now uh, more careful, uh, probably for the same reasons that um, the ECB is careful as well. So uh, problems uh, related to the outlook for the growth of the global economy, instability uh, and also emerging economies. So the Fed is now data dependent as it has been, but the tone is very much to the downside. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if we were to see a, um, an interest rate cut, uh, if the next move of the Fed is an interest, interest rate cut and that it happens this year. But because nothing really changed, uh, the dollar remained the same, the markets remained uh, unaffected, so nothing really to report on. Um, elsewhere, uh, just talk about oil. So oil had a bit of a roller coaster this week and uh, it started on the up, uh, mainly due to geopolitical instability. So we had the situation in Libya, uh, which threatened the supply, also in Venezuela. But then uh, President Putin came out and said, oh, I don't think that the oil price should be too high. And so um, we are now sitting uh, where we were pretty much with uh, crude oil on around $65. And this is all I have to say for this week. And next week I'll be here with more news to report on.